Hello, welcome to the Will to DIY. This podcast is a place for me to sandbox ideas, play with them, tinker with them, build on them, or perhaps just throw them away and get back to work. Hey y'all, uh, okay, so this is going to be a little bit rambly. I, I haven't sort of jotted down any notes or anything on this one. Just sort of uh, read something this morning. Um, it's based on Adler psychology or Adlerian psychology. This was a contemporary of Freud and Jung. Um, one of these guys that I think, you know, when you deal with Freud or Jung and they you think about the root of their psychology, especially Freud, then there's this idea that we all have early traumas and these early traumas end up becoming all of our sort of bad behaviors in the future or inability to cope with the world properly. And so we all have kinks and we all have weird hangups and everything. Uh, what it really doesn't take into account is why so many people have horrible things happen to them and yet they still show up and become normal, right? They are not just normal, but they actually thrive and do excellent work in the world. So where is that gap? I think there's something that ends up happening where we're often looking for trauma so much and we're looking for a backstory underneath the story. There's uh, in movies or something like, why did you become Batman? Oh, there must have been a horrible trauma, right? Because you must have been, for you to become this person, you must have been super damaged. There's other people that weren't damaged at all and they became crazy people. And there's a lot of people who were super damaged and they came out okay. There's examples of people that went through something as traumatic as the Holocaust and they found ways to do positive forward thinking that kept them maybe not content, but kept them moving forward. Uh, I guess I'm basically talking about Man's Search for Meaning, which is the Viktor Frankl text when he was uh, talks about his experiences when he was in the concentration camps. Um, and, and really the goal that he set up was to imagine a future and having a positive output for that future and then just immersively imagining it. And this is one of the things I think Adler discusses too is to actually move forward with projects that make you a good person, that make you a better person. Um, and the, one of the reasons I think you would want to do this is because it's quite easy to fall into these feelings of inferiority and inferiority unto itself is fine, right? I can feel inferior about my inability to speak Spanish and that might spur me on to speak Spanish and take some lessons and become a better person, right? So it's not negative unto itself. It's just when I start making excuses for, well, because I never got enough education, I can never now take enough time to learn Spanish. I, I don't, you know, there's some flaws in that argument. And what ends up happening is you really sort of drop yourself off of the radar of, um, attempting to continue being a better person because you found an excuse to maintain this sort of inferiority. So when anyone asks you why you haven't done anything new, you have this ready set excuse that they can feel sorry for you that you're just not educated enough or you're not smart enough or you're not tall enough or you're not X, Y, and Z, right? It's, it's whatever this kind of thing is. And so we end up generating an inferiority complex where we don't move anymore. And if this continues, it becomes a superiority complex where we can only talk about what we did that was awesome in the past. And because I was so awesome in the past, you should respect me now. Um, this is sort of this braggadocious thing that ends up happening, which is just super tacky and right. No one wants to be around a braggart. Uh, and people that have true value don't have to do that. So how do you get to that sort of stage where you don't let your inferiority um, drive you into negativity, but you remain positive? I think those are sort of important questions to sort of ask and what kind of projects are going to take you into the future? At what points are you too scared to move forward? Uh, and so you're allowing yourself to remain in a toxic situation. Are you building up an inferiority? Are you letting someone treat you as inferior even though you know you're not? Um, because I think any of those would be bad situations to be stuck in and something that we should push back against. The unfortunate thing there is when you start pushing back, you might be in the right, but I think that also um, you take other people out of being the hero of their own story. So the narrative that they want to spin is that they're a great person, and when you start showing them what a bad person they are for mistreating you, and then they feel guilty about it, where well, you're controlling them through guilt. And no one wants to be controlled anyway, but much less controlled through guilt. Uh, so you end up creating enemies and sort of a toxic environment. Uh, maybe it's not even toxic. Maybe it's just unpleasant. Um, but overall, I think the end goal on some of this stuff is that people find negativity 
and they find what if you can be in a society that champions weakness and weakness becomes power because I was victimized or had horrible things happen to me at one point, then from here on, I am the expert of my own pain. And anything you say to me, well, you can't experience my own pain, therefore I don't have to listen to you. You end up discounting the people that surround you and are part of your community, people who are trying to help and bond with you. And this sort of reminds me of this um, Tolstoy quote that is, happy families are all alike and every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. I've always found that quote to be sort of uh, telling in that basically unhappiness equals uniqueness. And uniqueness is a form of identity. So our identity politics are often based around our unhappiness rather than our happiness. Um, There is this other kind of fun little Adler thing where he talks about is when you're trying to derive power from something, right? Who is the most powerful person in the world? And it ends up being the weakest person. For instance, he discusses the baby as being uh, the thing that cannot be dominated. It rules all things through its weakness.